Hi, welcome to Team Mulder Sheep Reviews. 3D printing. I kind of wanted one. Every time I started looking, I started to fancy it. I needed it. I wanted it. I was going to have it. I got one. I knew it was going to be a steep learning curve. The software. Will it work with a MacBook? Will it work with a PC? A big ask to learn all this information. And I wasn't really sure I wanted to take the plunge, but after looking at all the, the support online, I went with the, the, the Creality Ender 3 Pro. Entry model, you can spend £150, maybe a little bit cheaper. You can spend £5,000. What's the difference? It was literally mind-blowing to which one do I choose? How much do I spend? If I spend £500, will it be better than the £200 ones? And oddly, when I looked at it, the difference between the £200 entry model and the £500 was very little. Speed didn't make any difference. Quality, they say you pay more, you get better quality. Or do you? So, I started looking and the Ender 3 Pro seemed to tick all the boxes for me. I was asked recently, if I was going to buy another one, then what would I be looking at? If money was no object, I might be looking at the CR10S Pro, five, six hundred pound, but it's bigger. I thought, am I going to print anything that, that warrants that? For, for what you're going to get different, I didn't see the worth in paying the extra. So, I went with the Ender 3 Pro. Kit form, it was more or less put together and then dismantled to fit in a box. So it wasn't too difficult to follow the step-by-step -step instructions and assemble it. It doesn't, it doesn't work in the way that a lot of people would expect it to, because everybody assumes you need a computer, it's gotta be connected, you need to program it, and it's got No, the computer's built into it. It comes with a, a little micro SD card. So once you've created the 3D models or downloaded the 3D models, you put it on the little memory card and then you plug that memory card into the memory slot. Then you use the jog and shuttle wheel to select the model you want to print and off it goes. So there is no connection to the computer. There are ways of connecting it to a computer, but you don't want to know about that. That's all you want to know is if I buy a 3D printer, do I need to be a computer expert to be able to do it? Well, no. What you need to do is know how to find Thingiverse. I kid you not, it's called Thingiverse. So you can go to Thingiverse and search Thingiverse for whatever parts you want to print. And there's millions, maybe billions. And then you take a fancy to something and you download it. And it downloads as a 3D model and it's, and it's in a, what they call an STL format. And what that means is a 3D model and it's got all the outside faces of the 3D model but no other attributes. It is just a shape. Well, the 3D printer uses slicer software. And this is, don't panic because it's not as bad as you think. On the little memory stick came slicer software. So I installed it onto the PC. So what I found, you simply drag if you've downloaded the Thingiverse model, you simply drag that model into the slicer software. Like I said, this is not a how-to video, so I'm just telling you, explaining it to you. So you drag it in there, and then all of a sudden it comes a little 3D model. Now what the slicer software does is breaks up that model into slices. So that each slicer or layer is built up by the 3D printer. So it starts off the bottom, prints it all the way up to the top until it's completed. However, the slicer software defines all the attributes of the outside thickness walls, how, whether it's going to be hollow, whether it's going to have a grid in there, any little supports that's needed. So that does that automatically. It takes seconds. Complex models might take a minute or so. But it can prepare that model very very quickly very simplistic software so it's not complicated and it is pretty intuitive it has got user defined parameters being low quality standard quality and high quality so you can use those default settings 
But what it does, it makes that 3D model compatible for the Ender 3 Pro. Now to give you a sort of time scale, something like that could take three hours. Three hours. Something like that, flat, could take an hour. Except this is PLA plastic. Plastic! Oh no! What about the world? What about the environment? It's biodegradable. Instead of taking hundreds of years to degrade it, does it in 10. And it's not palm oil. But to print, one of the most critical things of, of, of it all, you've got to get that first layer perfect on the bed and then all the subsequent layers will be fine. So to do that, the bed has to be leveled. To level a bed, there's adjuster screws. There's wheels. And those wheels, there's four corners and four bolts. What you're doing is adjusting the bed in each corner to get it level. So what you do, you adjust the wheel and you put a bit of paper so the nozzle's underneath there. And as you're moving the, the wheels and adjusting the wheel and bringing the bed up, it'll start to make contact with the nozzle. But you've cleverly put a little bit of paper in between. So the paper gets jammed and you think, so when you adjust the wheel back until the paper can move, so you know the distance between the tip of the nozzle and the bed is the thickness of a bit of paper because the paper will move underneath the nozzle, between the, the nozzle and the bed. So you do that for all four corners, job done. That bed is level. Every now and again, you check it. If you change the nozzle, you'll re-level the bed. So what sort of things are we printing? So one of the first things I printed was this little fella. Two hours. Look at the size of him. High quality, very, very smooth. This was actually for my Dremel. So I can put it on the worktop, put the Dremel in. And you can see the sort of quality. You do get a sort of grain to it. This actually is a, a skid for a mini talon. There's the skid. That's what I was printing. This was the 3D model. It creates a support structure. And that was a tick in a box support structure there's the support so for this particular model it created that underneath and that so when it came off the printer that's how it came off and i simply got my pen knife stuck it in there and cracked it and off it come like a shell this in the bin that finished product a dragonfly look at that all these hinges see the, it moving all these parts they're not clipped together or linked together because it's printed in layers it's able to print the hinge mechanism automatically this hinge not clipped together there's actually pins and as it's printed it's printed the layer then started to print pins in the hinge and then when i took it off the bed it came off like that i actually went crack it was movable so that is a hinge a fully functioning hinge which i've used on my enclosure if you want to go bigger this i might add was printed with no support so this was come off the bed just like that i ain't putting the links below there's too many thingiverse i've put the link to thingiverse check it out so lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things on thingiverse to print this is a roll of red they normally tell you what the printed temperature this one is 190 to 220 degrees most printers are set up to print at default about 200 degrees it's can be brittle you bend this particular brand and it will snap this particular brand i really liked because i put it in there and i had no trouble at all oh, it snapped. so this one's a little bit harder to snap it's not as as brittle you know like this one's not snappy and this is Sunlu. pretty universal just worked give me good qualities had less failures this one i bought from technology outlet it was their premium print same sort of characteristics for printing but i found it a little bit firmer but a little bit more fragile but the, the quality of the plastic was quite hard with the finished results so it was felt quite tough Another thing to mention is they do flexible filament. Not only that, this particular stuff is 
slightly elastic heated so as you can see I can't snap it but the flexible stuff allows you to print protective cases but they're flexible what I found is the quality is sacrificed to be flexible, so don't go too complicated. Are you with me so far? So the plastic is important. So filament and the quality of the filament is going to be a factor moving forward. But something to bear in mind when you're buying it. Obviously when you, when you first start 3D printing, you want to buy every single color. Oh look, it's, it's prints in stone. Oh, it's got a copper look. Don't get drawn in. Think about what you're going to print and get what you need to start you off. So buy a couple of rolls. So, I hope you found that helpful. What do you want from a 3D printer? Do you need a 3D printer? The answer, you probably do, because you're already watched this video. So you want it. Go get it. Except I got the Ender 3 Pro. I think it's okay. Needs a bit of tender love and care now and again. Upgraded a few parts, but it does everything I needed to do. So I recommend it. So if you're thinking about it, I hope this has been helpful. A couple of guidance notes. If you have any questions, pop them below and I'll be happy to answer. So thank you for watching Team Woolly Sheep Reviews and I'll speak to you soon to answer some of your questions. Have a nice day and Try to stay healthy and hygienically clean to avoid the coronavirus. Thank you for watching Team Willy Sheep Reviews. Bye.